Hello, everybody. Welcome to Alan Wall's Photography. This is Alan. What are you doing in my living room? <laughs> Today, we're going to do something completely different, something we've never done and something I've been looking forward to doing for quite a long time. Today, we're going to shoot an album cover. Across the bar, gin spies an empty glass. It's a dead one, it's a crime, she says. As always, there's a backstory to this one. Uh, my youngest brother, his name is Craig. He lives out in Santa Cruz, California. Uh, he's a great guy, and uh, he's a great musician, and he's got a great band. The name of the band is The Bludgers. I'll tell you a bit more about them in just a second, but they've been making records for quite a long time, and uh, they're really very good. In fact, the music you're listening to is from their latest album, which hasn't been released yet, so you're getting to hear it first. Let me introduce you to the members of the band real quick. The Bludgers are Paul Colusi from Rockport, Massachusetts. He plays the guitars. Sean Fogarty from uh, Cornwall in New York, not Cornwall in the south of England. He plays the drums. Andy Leach is from Cleveland, Ohio, and he plays the guitars, he sings, and uh, he plays things with keys, so uh, padlocks, I guess that would be. Uh, John Falong is from somewhere in New Zealand with a name that I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce. New Zealand's fairly small. If you go there and just yell out his name, you'll probably find him that way. He plays the guitar and sings. And of course, the, uh, the, the anchor of the band, the bassist, is uh, Craig Walls, my brother from Santa Cruz, California. Great guys, great music. You really need to check them out. So when I was talking to Craig about this album, I had a suggestion. I said, well, why don't you let me shoot a couple of uh, demo album covers for you and see if you and the band like any of them. And uh, if you do, they're yours. And they were happy with that idea. Uh, I'm not sure whether it was because they knew what a fantastic photographer I was or because it was free. No comments on that, please. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the, the name of the, the album is still up in the air, but the uh, band sent me some of the music from this uh, EP uh, a few weeks ago, and I've been listening to it a lot since I got it. Uh, the band plays a kind of mix between rock and roll and Americana, but with a lot of rock. But as soon as I started thinking about what I could do for this album cover, I found myself in a bit of a dilemma. The, the music is most definitely upbeat. It's got a nice hook. It's uh, easy to listen to. And uh, yeah, it's good American rock and roll. Uh, but the, the messages seemed a little darker than that. The, the two lead songs, the ones that the, the band is actively promoting, are uh, called Dirty Laundry, and the other one is uh, Full Steam Behind, uh, which is the one you've been listening to, which is a great name, and they may end up using that as the title for the album. I don't know. But I immediately started thinking about those two concepts, the, the Full Steam Behind, which is kind of a, an angry commentary on the way the world is going right now, uh, it's a little uh, cryptic, the lyrics, but I, I, they write that way, and the, that's good. I, I approve of that. The second song is called Dirty Laundry, and uh, if I've interpreted the lyrics right, it's a song about corporate greed. Um, I think that's the best way to put it. And uh, the comeuppance that uh, people can expect from that at some point down the road. And uh, it's a, a song about whether or not they want to rat out their uh, accomplices. And it's a good song. I like it. it. It gave me a lot to think about. Now, the first thing I thought when Craig and I were talking about the, the album cover was that I was going to do something that kind of told a little bit of the stories the way I, I interpreted them. But that has to be the most dangerous thing you can possibly do with an album cover. Um, if you make it too subtle, it'll just confuse people. They won't know what in the heck you're talking about. And if you make it too blatant, 
it will insult people. I'm sure you've seen album covers that, that do this. Um, instead, I wanted to lean towards something that was a little bit more abstract, a little bit more head scratching, uh, but also either communicated the message from one of those two songs, or maybe just communicated the message of the band. So one of the things I did was went back and looked at all their previous album covers, and I realized that one of the things I absolutely had to keep in mind was the way the band has presented their albums in the past. I didn't want to, to create an album cover that was so different from what they've done in the past that their fans might think that they had changed. I decided that if I tried to, to come up with a clever, cryptic story about the contents of one of these songs, it would be kind of like an in-joke and the band would get it. And it's unlikely that many other people would unless they really studied the music. Now I have a personal taste for album covers that are a little bit more thought provoking, uh, maybe a, a touch on the surreal side. Probably my two favorites of all uh, were Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon and uh, Pink Floyd's Wish You Were Here. I, I went out last week, we had one nice day, and uh, I went out to a little park I know, uh, and I shot a few concept shots. I wasn't crazy about any of them, but there were a couple that I thought had potential. I decided that uh, I was going to, to try to work in a prop that I'd found at the thrift shop, and this was a really cool thing. I've got it right here. It's, uh, it's an old timey radio, an Arvin radio from like the 1930s, I think. And uh, I sh probably shouldn't have done this, but I gutted it and uh, put, put a little bit of um, gel in there. And I built a, a, little, a little contraption that looked like uh, valves inside it so they would shine through and I, I really wanted to use this somehow in the album cover but as cool as the radio is and uh, as good a use as i'm going to find for it at some point uh, what i really wanted were the vacuum tubes out of this and i did get all of those out spent hours getting them absolutely pristine clean and uh, ready to photograph. And I want to use those, those uh, uh, vacuum tubes. I even did uh, uh, one or two using the same figurines that I found. Uh, I've since learned that they were from Westworld, the uh, television series. The little lady with a big head and the man that she was getting ready to shoot. I did a, 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 an indoor out shot of them on the porch and I was really happy with how the picture turned out. It had absolutely no connection to the band or the album, so I didn't think it would go anywhere, but maybe some other band will want to use it sometime, who knows? So I, I, I've run through a lot of different ideas, but I finally decided after doing a few test shots last night that what I wanted to do was gonna be more about the band, the music, and the style of music that they play. Now, this was partly based on the fact that it, it's more in line with the way their previous album covers have been, uh, and I thought it would be less jarring or confusing to the band's fans. So what I thought we could do in this video is I am going to describe what I'm going to try to do, then I'm going to show you how I would set it up, uh, how I would uh, uh, do the lighting and uh, yeah, take the photographs. Before we get started, and it's not as if he needs it, but I'm going to give a shout out to Carl Taylor, the uh, phenomenal still life and product and portrait photographer. He's a genius guy and I'm using a lot of the techniques that I learned from him. So let me describe what I'm going to be trying to do and uh, then we'll start doing it. You know what, before we do that, thank you to my 
Patreon supporters. Thank you to the supporters of the channel through the website. Um, you know how much I appreciate you. And uh, yes, thank you very much. Couldn't do it without you. All right, let's go over to the west wing of my house and uh, we'll look at uh, what we're going to be photographing. So there are two things that we're going to be photographing to make the image that I want. Before I describe the image, let me uh, introduce you to the stars of the show. So these are the vacuum tubes that I'm going to use. Uh, they're absolutely gorgeous. These aren't even fancy ones, but uh, I love them. They're, they're, they're beautiful. The printing on them is very cool. I like the metal one too. And they've got lots of detail. They're in great shape. And this is the other half of it. Uh, this is a, a Fender Telecaster. This is, um, this is actually not the exact same guitar that the band uses. They use a, a, a solid body, not this slimline Telecaster, but uh, this is mine. I also have a, a Stratocaster that I thought might work, but um, I don't like the look of it quite as much as, as this. Uh, and I think this also... Uh, transmits that uh, Americana country type of vibe as well. So this is the guitar we're going to use. When I got it out and started cleaning it, I noticed uh, I've had this for 20 years and I noticed that uh, I'd never actually got rid of some of the um, plastic from the pick guard. So I spent a couple of hours today taking all of that off and cleaning it and putting it back on. Uh, but this is... Uh, um, this is about as clean as uh, you're going to see it. So this is uh, the, the star of the show. And what I want to do is this. So the idea that uh, I want to go for is to, to shoot this guitar from the end on, pretty much flat, with my camera slightly above uh, against this black velvet backdrop that I'll show you in just a minute. And uh, what I want to do then is I want to have a line of vacuum tubes just suspended in space, either over the fretboard or to the side of the fretboard, disappearing into the blackness behind. I want to light this guitar a little differently than I would if I was uh, lighting it for a guitar catalog or something of that nature. I want the, the light to drop off and I'm not sure I want the, the far end of the guitar to be in focus. I'll have a better feel when we get it set up and I see the lighting, but I'm gonna be using, at least at first, I'm gonna be using a uh, 24 to 70 f 2.8 lens on my D850. Uh, obviously, uh, I'm not going to be able to get the whole guitar in focus uh, because of the, the orientation. Uh, I may or may not focus stack to get everything in focus. Then again, I may allow the, the top end of the fretboard and the, and the headstock of the guitar to kind of soften into the, the background. What I don't want to do is light the background in any way. I'll probably move it back a bit further than it is, but I don't want any light falling on this. This this black velvet, this is real velvet, it drinks light. I mean, nothing reflects off it. But if you have light coming from the side, sometimes it'll pick up the nap, if that's what it's called, on the velvet, and you'll get a faint glow on it. And I definitely don't want that. Uh, so the first, um, uh, the first task with the lighting is just going to, uh, to, to be sure that we have a good, even, soft lighting. Uh, with no reflections uh, and, and you know, no stray light bouncing off the highly reflective parts. This pickup and these buttons may be problematic because they are so reflective on top, as, as does the uh, plate down at the bridge here. But the, um, I think that this will light up well with a nice soft uh, universal light. But before we can start lighting this thing, we have to figure out how to stand it up because I don't want it leaning on anything. I don't want it on a table or on a surface. I want it to appear to be in blackness, just floating. But I've got a little GoPro sucker that I use in my car 
And uh, if I'm very, very careful, I think I may be able to position this horizontally almost uh, on a stand using that suction cup. We'll give it a try, fingers crossed. So we have a couple of specific challenges that we've got to uh, figure out to get this shot. The first is um, I, I want to get as much of this shot with the camera as I possibly can. We're going to have to use Photoshop uh, to, uh, to remove any visible stands and stuff like that, but hopefully it won't take too much uh, manipulation. This is the, um, uh, the, the sticker that I use to attach the GoPro to the window of my car. It's surprisingly strong vacuum because it has this thing that sucks all the air out and it really holds pretty firmly. Um, and I've got one of my super clamps on top of just a, a little, uh, tiny little um, lighting stand, one of the stands that, uh, that I use for backlighting usually. Uh, and I've just clamped it, um, I've clamped the sucker thing right into the, to the jaws of the super clamp and it's holding really, really firmly. And what I'm going to do is suction the guitar right about there, right at its center of gravity. Uh, so that uh, in the off chance that the vacuum gives way, it might not come tumbling to the floor. Uh, the second thing is, how am I going to get these vacuum tubes to float in midair? Uh, because I really want them, I, I can't decide whether I want them geometrically up and down and in a straight line or whether I want them floating around. Like in this photograph, um, I, I tried something similar using just the headstock of the guitar and had uh, uh, multiple tubes uh, at odd angles. But I'm thinking maybe, depending on how the guitar looks when we get it photographed, maybe just having these in a, a line uh, as they get smaller with perspective. So I think what I'm gonna do is mount each of these tubes to a, a stick of acrylic. These things are just fantastic for this kind of project. I'll mount it towards the end, but not too far. I don't want it to, to vibrate. And I'll just uh, use some hot glue to fix it in position like that. And once it's set on there well, I'll position the valve exactly where I want it for the photograph and then shoot the image. Now, what I'll do is I'll, I'll go into Photoshop and I'll remove the, the stick and anything else that uh, is interfered with in the photograph. So that's the plan. Uh, job one is gonna be uh, positioning the guitar and getting the uh, initial lighting where I want it. Once we get that done, uh, I'll uh, move on to, to photographing the um, individual tubes one at a time. And then finally, we'll uh, take it all into Photoshop and uh, put it together. I've left a little bit of light on, left one of the curtains open. <coughs> just for a, a little bit of light in here so you can see what I'm doing. Um, I was going to position the guitar and then position the scrim, but uh, I'm anxious about the guitar staying on the stand. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up the scrim first so that our light bounces off the guitar and up into the camera. I'm gonna position the scrim horizontally and tipping back just a little bit and then my lights are going to be positioned up here and down at the uh at the guitar <clears throat> i think what i'll do is i'll position the uh i'll position the scrim first then i'll get the lights roughly where they need to be and then i'll bring the guitar in so that's the plan if you see me messing around with these things these are small earths that are made of spongy rubber. And I put them on the end of my C-stand arms so that they don't gouge an eye out. And I took one of them off yesterday for five minutes just to position a C-stand and walk right into it. And I have a goose egg on my head to prove it. 
If you're using C-stands, get one of these and stick it on the sharp end that you're not using. Top tip. Should we hang out our dirty laundry and stay home? They found that big pile of dirty money. They found that long trail of dirty cash. Now you can see us all looking. What I'm going to do is make sure this sucker is completely clean. Or should we hang out our dirty laundry? Then I'll put spit on it. <laughs> it works better than trying to put water on it. Now I've already tested out the figure at uh, the center of gravity and it appears to be right there. Now the questions are coming quicker. We can't keep the peace. Should we go it alone? Or should we hang out our dirty laundry? Oh, now I'm seeing more debris. Some of this is scratches. I've been playing this guitar for 15 years. So. Of course, this is going to be on the dark side of the guitar. All right. So, fingers crossed this will hold. I really hope it will. Now I'm going to go position this underneath the, the light tent that we made. Okay, the camera you're looking through is positioned right next to my camera. A word about my camera settings. I want to try, if I have to stack this, I want to use as few shots as possible. So um, I'm shooting at f11, uh, 1 250th of a second, an ISO 100. I have my primary light on the left, but just to give you an idea, this, uh, this is what the image looks like with the flash turned off. So even though I have a little bit of studio light uh, going on, so you can see what I'm doing, my uh, screen is completely black uh, at these settings. So we're, we're good to go. Let's take a shot just to get a baseline. It's very dark, obviously. So I think what I'm gonna do first as always, uh, concentrate on getting the first light positioned uh, where I want it. By the way, light number one is uh, an Einstein uh, studio strobe that uh, I've talked about before, and I have no modifier on it. It's just a bare bulb. Uh, that gives me the, the smoothest gradient of light over the guitar, so it'll drop off very naturally. The second light is a less powerful 400 watt second uh, Alien Bees, and that has a gridded softbox on it. All right, so let me uh, position the lights and uh, we'll see what we come up with. on having the uh, key light positioned really close to the scrim so we have excellent light falling on the sunburst part uh, you've got a lovely uh, faint edge light from this same light which is working well just the way it is now this is dark as you would expect and I'm going to leave that dark but what I'm going to end up doing is putting a reflector under here so that I can bounce a little bit of light back into these edges. And that will also take care of this side of the neck. But before I do that, I want a separate light that is going to light up this part of the pick guard and uh, with hopefully without getting any hot spots on this stainless steel. 
So to do that, I'm going to use the second light. I'm using a grid so that uh, the light won't be quite as soft and quite as broad as the uh, as the bare bulb. Uh, and uh, we'll see if uh, if that doesn't work, I'll pull the grid off and go with the soft box. And if that doesn't work, I'll get rid of the soft box. So let me turn this on, give it a couple of shots, and see what we've got. I'm going to turn this studio light off. Or video light, so it'll plunge you into darkness. And well, that basically does exactly what I wanted it to do, only the pit guard is now too brightly lit. There's a couple of ways. Let me try just pulling it back ever so slightly and lifting it up a little. Okay. That should remove a little bit of that. Okay. I'm picking up a reflection from the uh, tone knob. I'm really not sure that there's anything I can do short of moving the camera or the guitar to get rid of that. That's a shame. I, I don't like that. That doesn't look good. I really need to raise the, the camera up. But if I raise the camera up, I have to start all over again with the lighting because that's going to that's going to change the way the the first light is bouncing off the guitar. It also might bring the uh, the floor into play. I certainly hope not. So the problem I'm struggling with is this shiny bit of uh, of steel is reflecting right at the edge of the of the pick guard uh, and it's an ugly reflection it shouldn't be there about the only way that i can really work that uh, given the very limited space we're working with will be to rotate the camera this uh, rotate the guitar this way so that the reflection falls onto the pick guard where it won't be visible so let's try that i'm going to have to obviously redo pretty much everything else. You have no idea how nervous this makes me. All right, let me see if I can get that framed at that angle. Okay, I'm happy with the way it's framed, but I have a feeling that we're gonna to have to start all over with the lights. That didn't get rid of the uh, reflection, it just moved it. Instead of the reflection being here, now the top of the, uh, the, the button is reflecting right here. I really don't have any more room to, to play with. I'd have to raise the guitar and the camera in order to get rid of the rim of reflection from this button. The only thing I'm able to do is raise the camera up for about uh, about six inches, which is fantastic. But what it does is it picks up the floor. I run out of my velvet backdrop and uh, obviously we can't have that. So what I'm going to do, I have more velvet than this on the roll. So what I'm going to do is let more velvet out and then I'm going to pull it back towards the guitar so that hopefully, uh, if it'll stay in position, there'll be uh, a, a uniform uh, velvet backdrop all the way to about a foot in front of where it is now. And that'll allow me to, uh, to get the shot. I'm just trying to decide whether or not to um, take the guitar off the stand uh, while I'm working on it. This is one of those things where if it occurs to you that you should take the guitar off the stand, take the guitar off the stand because I'll probably bump into it otherwise. So let me do that and we'll go on from there. Well, that was massively frustrating, um, but I have the, the velvet now all the way under the part that was bothering me. I had to change the direction of the guitar to straighten this angle more towards the camera so that this reflection wasn't still hitting along the, 
little edge of the sunburst there. I also raised the camera up a little bit more, seeing as I bought myself more room by bringing the, the background forward. But of course, by the time I'd done all of that, uh, I had to start all over with the lighting. So um, I've repositioned the key light. I haven't even turned on the second light yet, uh, but I'm, I'm liking the, the overall look uh, with, the, uh, with the key light. So it still needs a lot of work down this side. I'm definitely going to need to use some kind of a reflector to bring out this edge uh, a little more uh, properly. And my goodness, the guitar's already dirty again. So it took me forever to balance it on that stick as well. I get more nervous as the minutes go by. The plunger seems to have lost its uh, suckishness. That's not a word, is it? So let me go ahead, get the second light finished, shoot a few pictures. And once I'm absolutely happy with the guitar, I'll shoot a plain shot of the backdrop just as a reference, even though there's no light getting to it. Uh, and then, uh, then I'll start bringing in the valves and figuring out how to position them up the neck of the guitar, um, which means I've got to turn the glue gun on because it takes a minute. All right, so let me do those things and uh, I'll speed everything up so you don't have to listen to me talk. <laughs> St. Monday watches over you and me And grants the bone exhausted some liberty Let's the ill lie back in bed Ice packs on their weary heads There is just one other thing that I need to fix and will be good. I'm going to use the photographs I've taken so far, but I need to find a way to get rid of the shadow underneath the bridge here. Uh, there's a dark shadow, which I, I've tried to, to get light into with uh, reflectors. I'm going to have to try a couple of other things. I thought about using a, a low power diffused speed light but I'd much rather just bounce some of this light in there. So let me try that a couple more times and then I'll be happy with the guitar. I think I've got all the shots that I need. All right, so I can't move the guitar or the lights or the camera. I think what I'm going to do is put each of the valves up the neck in a line, which means I'm going to have to glue them on separately and shoot them one at a time and I didn't plug the thing in that was a bad oversight it usually heats up uh, fairly quickly it seldom takes more than about 25 minutes so the idea then will be to uh, position the valve shoot it then move it five spaces up the neck shoot another one uh, and then with the second one, I have to remember the frets I'm at so that I can have them fairly evenly spaced. And then one or two off the end of the guitar fading out into uh, out of focus. That's my idea. I don't know if it'll work. You might be wondering why I don't take the guitar out and just shoot the valves uh, that way. Of course, without the guitar there, I won't have a frame of reference as to where the valves need to go. And the other thing is, pieces of the guitar are going to reflect out of these bulbs. So these bulbs need to be positioned in the right place. I can cut them out and move them slightly. In fact, they'll all be on their own layer when I go into Photoshop, so I can put them wherever I want. Uh, but um, it just makes more sense to do this. It'll be quick once we get going. Does anybody know how to use one of these things? What do you want to talk about while we're waiting? While I'm waiting for the gun to heat up, I'm going to 
give you a piece of movie advice that was given to me by a good friend from out in California, Mr. Mike Canfer, a gentleman, by the way, who has won an Oscar for his visual effects in a film that you might have heard of called The Titanic. Uh, so he's a brilliant guy and knows his stuff. So when he recommended to me that I watch this film I'm getting ready to tell you about, I put down what I was doing and watched it. And uh, it's absolutely superb. It's called Queen's Gambit. And I'm not going to tell you anything about it, except that it's got something to do with chess. And I strongly recommend you watch it, because I think it's one of the best films I've seen in recent memory. These are almost 100 years old, so I guess they should be a bit dirty. Okay, my gun's hot. I'm just going to put a blob of this hot glue right on the end and then I'll position this so we get a good angle on all the electronics. Now I'm going to put it right on the end and for reference I'm going to try to keep it as straight as possible so I don't have to manipulate it too much. The reason I use hot glue is, now this one will fall off but because it uh, sets so quickly and holds so well. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. Let's go over there, position this, and get the first valve shot, and then I'll finish them up. Okay, so this is the contraption I'm going to use. It's just, uh, as usual, it's my articulating arms with super clamps on them. The single most popular device on my on my uh, channel. Everybody wants to use these things. Good idea, they're fantastic. I don't think I can lower this any further, but it should be just low enough. So what I'm going to do is position one of the valves like so. I'll we'll start on on this side. Doesn't really matter. This is this is me being creative. I can't really tell if that's upright. I think it's pretty close. Let's see what it looks like through the camera. I've got it in sharp focus. I'm not happy with the light on it. It's okay, but it's, uh, I may have to bounce a little light onto it. And I might need to go get a smaller bounce card. Let me see what this looks like. To try something else. I'm not liking it, to be honest. Now this is a bit disappointing. It's not. It's not looking the way I wanted it to. But I'm not a quitter. About there. These articulating arms are the best things ever invented. No, 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 no. <sighs> All right, well, let me finish what I started. I'm going to take multiple shots with each valve so I can pick the ones I like later on. Though I have a feeling it's going to be picking the ones I dislike the least later on. I can't just light these valves separately and take the guitar out of the way and then change the lights for the valves because they won't look natural. They'll look like they're lit with a different light. And uh, so we're in a bit of a quandary because uh, I don't want any more light up here. It, right now it, it drops off into the headstock, which is exactly the effect I was looking for. So. No worries. 
let's let me take a bunch of valve shots and uh, I may end up deciding to use the guitar with some clever graphics or something instead because the guitar looks absolutely fantastic like this. All right, let me uh, glue some valves on. deciding that I didn't like any of the images except the guitar shots which I think were really nice very happy with how they turned out but um, my idea of using the vacuum tubes was a bust it just didn't work they didn't they didn't look good it didn't convey the message I was trying to convey uh, if anything they were a mildly irritating distraction so why did I leave all that in the video? Uh, well, for the very simple reason that that's the way real photography is. If it worked out every time we pointed a camera at something and our wishes came true and it was the best picture in the world, then all our pictures would be rubbish because that just doesn't happen. Uh, it's a lot of hard work and you have to dissect what you did to find out what didn't work about it and then you learn from it. So next time, uh, it, it might involve a different technique, a different lens, different lighting, or it might involve a different idea. And that's kind of the point of this video, if there is a point to it, is just because I thought something was a good idea doesn't mean it's going to be a good idea. So give it a good, uh, honest try, and if it doesn't work out, move on to something else. And that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'll let you know what happens with the, uh, uh, with the final image. If they choose one of mine, that'll be great. If they don't, that'll be great too. If they don't, it's because they found something better and I uh, completely appreciate that. So uh, be sure to check out the band. Their name's The Bludgers and uh, you can find them. I'll put some links down in the show notes where you can find their Instagram page, their Facebook page, their SoundCloud page. <laughs> I'm guessing if it's called the SoundCloud page. Um, I don't make music that I would ever let anybody listen to, so uh, no danger of me knowing that. But I'll put a link to, to that so you can go there and actually listen to some of their music. And when their new album comes out, whether or not it has one of my photographs on the cover, you should consider buying it, because these guys are seriously good musicians. You'll enjoy it. If this is your uh, first video on the channel, be sure to check out some of my other videos. Most of the time, we actually succeed in the plan we set out to do. Uh, so uh, there's that. <laughs> there are a whole bunch of videos on macro and every other kind of photography somewhere in my back catalog. So be sure to check them out. Thanks for coming by. If you're not a, a subscriber, please click the box and become one. And uh, if you are a subscriber, please ring that bell. That way I'll be able to let you know when a new video uh, gets put up and it does something to my statistics. <laughs> not my vital statistics, my uh, YouTube statistics. All right, guys, take care. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.